Hi, this is Steve Hall and I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about personalising learning. The model that I've used particularly is that of David Hargreaves where he looks at nine interconnected gateways which he developed by studying uh, and researching with schools up and down the country. The gateways are assessment for learning, learning to learn, new technologies, curriculum, advice and guidance, mentoring and coaching, workforce development, design and organisation, and possibly the most important, student voice. What Hargreaves did was to cluster these gateways into what he called four deeps. Deep learning bringing together student voice, assessment for learning and learning to learn, deep experience, curriculum and new technologies, deep support, advice and guidance, and mentoring and coaching, which is particularly interesting as far as education is concerned, and deep leadership, which looks at design and organisation, and workforce development. One of the ways I've found using um, this model of Hargreaves is through the use of a mind map. Uh, not only does it allow me to spread out a bit, but it also allows me to expand the, the model and um, look to see uh, individual areas, uh, how they might open up. I'm just going to give you a brief demonstration with a mind map which I created for a, um, for a primary school uh, where I was working. This particular um, piece of software that I use, I'm using is Mind Manager and it allows you to go into presentation mode uh, and then do a mind map tour uh, around, uh, around your mind map and just explore some of the things that are in there. If we were to focus initially on uh, deep leadership, the two elements of school organisation and design and workforce development can open up into all sorts of different ways of perhaps even as an audit of um, where, where somebody's thinking or an organisation's thinking is uh, at that particular time in that area. Similarly, deep support looks at advice and guidance and mentoring and coaching. Uh, the impact of mentoring and coaching on learning uh, is enormous, particularly in the area of uh, emotional intelligence and well-being. Um, the deep experience opens up very much for curriculum new technologies and allows us to consider the impact that new technologies are having on learning through things like gaming, uh, visual literacy, etc. And then uh, moving on to deep learning, which is the area we're going to particularly look at, it uh, allows us to look in depth at um, student voice, learning to learn and assessment for learning and that's what I'd like to spend just a little time doing now. The three interconnecting gateways for deep learning um, uh, make very interesting combinations looking at how learner voice and assessment for learning interact for example um, makes us consider whether shared understanding of expectations and standards is something that we, uh, we can say we've definitely got. If we look at some of the other things which are um, uh, how they interact then it provides the following questions. For example, to what extent is there a shared language for learning, as well as shared understanding of expectations and standards? What about empowering the students? What about the development of learning conversations and learning autonomy, and having learners who can operate at a metacognitive level? For me, I think this slide particularly um, articulates uh, what does characterise for the student for whom learning has been successfully personalised? The concept of engagement in learning, taking responsibility for their own learning, being independent and interdependent, to be confident as a learner, and this idea of maturity um, in relationships with staff and peers can lead to opportunities of co-construction of learning so that we as facilitators, lecturers, teachers, whatever, uh, can work closely with students and helping them to make decisions for themselves about what they want their learning to look like, what direction it might go in, but still giving them plenty of advice and guidance and still being there to moderate the assessments, even if they're involved in some assessment uh, processes themselves. Um, I hope you'll have a think about this and, and maybe look back through the slides and consider whether any of this is appropriate for us to try and use in some of our um, work with uh, both undergraduate and postgraduate le uh, level. I I've certainly applied a lot of these principles throughout my own work and uh, I get a lot out of it. I hope the students do too.